Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to tell you about Xeon E5 2667V4. This CPU right now you can buy on AliExpress for less than 40 euros plus VAT or some other taxes whatever you have in your country. And this CPU is particularly interesting because it comes with rather high uh, CPU clock frequency. Here I need to remind you that with V4 CPUs we cannot implement Turbo Boost Unlock procedure and that's why we need to buy CPUs with high clock frequency out of the box. In this test I'm going to compare E5 2667 V4 with my E5 2696 V3. I am also going to throw Core i3-12100 into the mix so we can compare these old multi-core Xeon E5 CPUs with a modern CPU that comes with only four strong cores. So here comes the technical specification of E5-2667 V4. The CPU has 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock is 3.2 GHz and the maximum turbo is 3.6 GHz. But because the CPU has TDP limitation of 135 watts, even under Cinebench R23 load, all 8 cores are running at 3.5 GHz. On the other hand, E5 2696V3 is a completely different CPU. It has 18 cores, 36 threads, and with this CPU we can implement Turbo Boost Unlock procedure. So with the Turbo Boost Unlock, all CPU cores will be running between 3.2 and 3.8 GHz, depends on the load. What's more important is that this CPU has 45 MB of cache while E5 2667V4 has only 25 megabytes. So E5 2696V3 has almost double as much cache compared to E5 2667V4. And unfortunately, cache size is very important for gaming performance. Additionally, I can say that E5 2667V4 supports DDR4-2400, while E5 2696V3 is limited to DDR4-2133. So, speaking about memory performance, we have very even results comparing read, write and copy speed using the ADA64 benchmark. What's interesting is that the latency is much better with E5 2667 V4. Here we have latency of somewhere about 66 nanoseconds, while with E5 2696 V3 we have a bit more than 71 nanoseconds. In both cases I have used exactly the same memory modules, 4 sticks, 8GB each, Samsung ECC registered memory modules. In case of E5 2696V3 we have DDR4-2133 CL12 and with E5 2667V4 we have DDR4-2400 CL14. Now it's time for the gaming benchmarks, but before I go into the numbers, I need to say that for this test I have used RX 5700 XT and not my standard RX 6800 XT. 6800 XT is currently in my main machine because I have sold my 6900 XT. And the money, well, Ukraine needs this money more right now. In the future I plan to buy 7900 XT or 7900 XTX. But for now, we have 5700 XT, and according to more than 30% of you, this is more than enough to test these old Xeon CPUs. By the way, everyone who answered in my poll, thank you very much, I appreciate your input. So, here are the gaming results, testing E5 2696V3, E5 2667V4 and Core i3-12100. On the screen you see two graphs, the one to the left is a standard FPS graph and the one to the right is the additional graph which is demonstrating how much faster or slower Core i3-12100 is compared to the Xeon E5 CPUs. Let's start with Assassin's Creed Valhalla as usual. Here Core i3 is able to render 76 and 107 FPS. Xeon CPUs deliver almost identical performance, 6705 FPS. As you can see, even though the game is rather demanding, Quad Core i7 is still faster. Watch Dogs Legion is an extremely CPU demanding game and it can utilize multiple CPU cores. So here, Quad Core i3-12100 is only able to roughly match 8 core E5-2667 V4. 18 core E5-2696 V3 is taking the lead with a 79 and 109 FPS. E5 2667V4 takes the second place, 7298FPS, and Core i3 is the last one, 6993FPS. Moving from optimized and demanding Watch Dogs Legion to not optimized and single-core Far Cry 6. 
Here, unsurprisingly, i3-12100 is much faster, 91 and 117 FPS compared to 7498 FPS and 7193 FPS with the Xeon E5 CVUs. Rainbow Six Extraction doesn't really see a difference between the CPUs with AMD RX 5700 XT. All three CPUs deliver about the same performance, 132-178 FPS. F1 2021 slightly favors i3-12100, but overall the performance is very close. i3 delivers 142-172 FPS, and Xeon CPUs deliver 138-168 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is a weird result because it's the only tested game that favors E5 2667 V4 over E5 2696 V3. Here, E5 2667 gives us 88 and 133 FPS, which is almost equal to 91 133 FPS of Core i3 12100, but Xeon E5 2696 V3 is lagging behind 86 and 125 FPS. Hitman 3 delivers almost identical performance with all the CPUs, somewhere around 170 FPS on average. The minimal FPS value in this benchmark is very unstable and unpredictable, thus I don't bother about it. Horizon Zero Dawn is a very CPU-demanding game, still it also relies on a single-core performance. Thus, quad-core R3-12100 is taking the lead again. 86, 121 FPS. Then we have 83 and 117 FPS with the V3 Xeon, and E5 2667 V4 takes the last spot, 81 114 FPS. Total War 3 Kingdoms doesn't see a difference between the CPUs, all three different configurations deliver 94 112 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an old but still rather demanding game, here i3-12100 is on the top spot yet again. 112-134 FPS. E5-2696 V3 is good for 85 and 130 FPS, and E5-2667 V4 delivers 88 and 123 FPS. So in this game the gap between Xeon E5 and Core i3 when comparing minimal FPS is more than 20%. This is a rather big difference. On average, though, these three configurations deliver almost identical performance. Sure, Core i3-12100 is the fastest, 91 and 133 FPS, then we have E5-2696 V3, thanks to it, 45 MB of cache and 3.8 GHz clock frequency, uh, it delivers 8531 FPS. The last spot goes to E5-2667 V4, 8529 FPS. Well, of course, I have also tested the system power consumption, and for this test I use Assassin's Creed Valhalla benchmark as usual. Under this test, entire system with Core i3 CPU consumes about 293 watts. Under the same test, the system with E5-2696 V3 consumes about 360 watts, and the system with E5-2667 V4 consumes about 313 watts. As expected, Core i3 is the most efficient and Xeon E5 V3 is the least efficient. If I turn these numbers to see how many watts of electricity are consumed to render a single frame, then we have the following picture. The system with i3 CPU consumes about 2.74 watts for one frame, system with E5 V3 consumes about 3.43 watts for one rendered frame, and system with the Xeon E5 V4 consumes almost 3 watts for one rendered frame. I have also tested Cinebench R23, but please keep in mind that E5-2696 ran without hyperthreading. If I enable hyperthreading, the Cinebench performance will be better, but the gaming performance will be worse. So in this configuration, uh, Core i3-12100 scores about 8400 points. E5-2696 V3 scores about 11200 points and E5-2667 V4 scores about 8800 points. It's remarkable how a quad-core CPU is almost catching up with an 8-core E5-2667 V4. The power consumption figures on the Cinebench R23 test are the following. 111 watts with i3, 215 watts with the Xeon E5 V3, and 147 watts with the Xeon E5 V4. 
Flipping the numbers to see how many watts are consumed per 100 points, we see that i3 system consumes only about 1.31 watts for 100 points, Xeon E5 V3 consumes about 1.91 watts for 100 points, and Xeon E5 V4 consumes about 1.67 watts for 100 points. I have also tested single core performance in Cinebench R23, and unsurprisingly, i3-12100 is almost double as fast as the Xeon CPUs, and the Xeon E5 V4 has slightly better single core performance than Xeon E5 V3. Even though E5 V3 has maximum turbo clock frequency of 3.8 GHz, and E5 2667 V4 is maxing out at 3.6 GHz. So the scores are 1672 points for the i3, 873 points for e5 v3, and 896 points for e5 v4. System consumption under this test 68, 104, and 74 watts for i3, e5 v3, and e5 v4 systems. Finally, flipping these numbers to see efficiency or how many watts are consumed for 100 Cinebench points, we have 0.41 watts consumed by the i3 system, 1.19 watts consumed by the E5 V3 system, and 0.83 watts consumed by E5 V4 system. All in all, these results are pretty much expected. Xeon E5 V3 CPUs, especially with the Turbo Boost Unlock, are very inefficient. Xeon E5 V4 CPUs are much more efficient, but they are still far behind modern core i3-12100. While conducting my test of E5-2667 V4, I accidentally forgot to enable resizable bar. That's why I had to retest all my games, and that's how I end up with the two sets of results. And since I already have these results, I'm gonna share them with you. So on your screen you can see the difference between resizable bar enabled and disabled. Everything else is exactly identical. So with these games, in some cases you can improve performance by up to 10 FPS, and in some cases the performance is identical. On average, across these tested games, the performance gap is just 3 FPS, 126 FPS without resizable bar, and 129 FPS with resizable bar. Still, 3 FPS is 3 FPS, and in certain games it can be up to 10 FPS, thus I recommend enabling a resizable bar. Essentially, it's just a little free performance bump. Before I finish this video, I would like to say a few words about undervolting or CPU voltage reduction with the Xeon E5-2667 V4. So, I have tested this CPU with my Huanan GX99 TF motherboard using BIOS from iEngineer. This BIOS has overclocking features and it is possible to adjust CPU voltage out of the box. Unfortunately, these settings are absolutely ignored by E5-2667 V4 and the CPU is always running at its default voltage. I have also tried to use the same BIOS updated with the Ultimate Patcher tool, which does not enable uh, Turbo Boost Unlock, but enables all other hacks. So I tried that and it also didn't work. And finally, I have also tried to manually inject FFS driver from S3 Turbo Tool that would reduce CPU voltage. Unfortunately, that also didn't work. E5 2667 V4 seems to be completely ignoring all voltage settings and just runs at its stock or Intel-defined voltages. Nevertheless, even with the stock voltages, the CPU is much more energy efficient than E5 V3 CPUs, and it means that it will bring much less stress on your motherboard via RAM. And thus, if you have some cheap Chinese X99 motherboard with E5-2620 or E5-2630 V3, then E5-2667 V4 might be a good upgrade for you. And of course, if you're looking to build a gaming computer with a very restricted budget, then E5-2667 V4 might be a good option. The CPU does not require any Turbo Boost Unlock hacks, it can work with the cheap Chinese X99 motherboards, it supports DDR4-2400. But as always, I strongly recommend you to look around and check prices for other components. In most cases, it is possible to buy cheap H610 motherboard with i3-12100 and achieve slightly better performance for about the same money. And with this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and educational. Bye for now.